بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The respected viewers, welcome to Hajj Day Today on Huda TV. This is your host Amr Dabur. Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enabled us to catch those days and live the blessed moments of the 10 days of the Hijjah. And we pray, Ya Allah, to you to make us and enable us to catch the day of Arafah safely. And one day, insha'Allah, for those who are not there, Ya Allah, take us to Arafah and make us with those who are there in Arafah and accept from us. Ameen. Hajj day to day. Arafah is coming in two days. And after that is the day of an nahr And before that are the blessed days of the first relatively nine days or specifically nine days full of opportunities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is offering us those seasons of rahmah, of mercy, of forgiveness, of salvation. مَا مِنْ يَوْمٍ أَكْثَرُوا مِنْ أَنْ يُعْتِقَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ عَبْدًا مِنَ النَّارِ مِنْ يَوْمِ عَرَفَةِ There is no day more than the day of Arafah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees from the fire of hell emancipates from the hellfire people more than he does on the day of Arafah. We are living on the days of freedom and emancipation from Naru Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. We are living the days where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the good deeds. Any action, any good deed, he loves and he accepts of those deeds more than he does in any other times. إِنَّ لِرَبِّكُمْ فِي أَيَّامِ دَهْرِكُمْ لَنَفَحَاتِ Indeed, your Lord has those special gifts and seasons, divine gifts. The Prophet ﷺ said, أَلَا فَتَعَرَّضُوا لَهَا Indeed, you should take the opportunities, you should seize the opportunities. That is, that is something that we live by in our life. Think of the Black Friday, the 4th of July was the other day. There are times and seasons around the end of the year, around certain times where shopping centers, malls, certain brands offer those um, discounts, special discounts, special offers. Buy one, get one free. Buy one, get two free. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the normal regular times, He offers 10 minimum for one deed. One hasana bi ashri amthaliha. If you do one good deed at the regular times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives ten. Where else can we get that? Buy one, get ten minimum free. Up to seven hundred and more based on your ikhlas and your sincerity. And what about the days of Dhul Hijjah? Seasons, special seasons like this. These are the times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives with no limit, especially for those on Arafah. These are the times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens His khaza'in, His treasures of mercy, of gifts for everybody. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to be with the winners on those days. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. My dearest brothers and sisters, on these days we remember the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The whole thing, the theme of the whole thing is Ibrahim alayhi salam and his family and their sacrifice and their submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would like to share with you a couple of points about Sayyiduna Ibrahim and his family in those few minutes. If there was something so special about Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, I think there were two top of those special things of Sayyidina Ibrahim, they come on the top. Number one, his vision was so clear. And I'm not talking about the eyesight here. I'm talking about the heart side, the insight. Wuduh al-ru'ya in Arabic. 
He knows exactly what he wants. He knows exactly his way. He knows exactly what to believe. It was so clear to him. Right? No matter what people around him say, no matter what everybody else believes, no matter what happens around him, no matter what the flow is going with, he's not going with the flow. It was so clear to him, where is the way? Which way to go? He announced it very clearly and he until the end of his life, he lived upon it and until the very end of his life, he is bequeathing his children. He is leave, He is talking to his children on the deathbed. مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِي What and who are you going to worship after me? Which way is going to be yours after me? It was so clear all through his life. This is what he lived upon and this is what he is dying upon. What is it? Clarity. Clarity of his way. And that's why Allah made him an Ummah. Allah made him an Imam, the greatest Imam to be followed. And I'm sharing some thoughts with you and you are welcome to share back th some thoughts with us on the numbers that you see on the screen uh, as we are speaking on the spiritualities of Hajj and Hajj day today. Prophet Ibrahim السلام, and Hajar السلام, and Ismail السلام, it was so clear to them. Hajar is left in the desert with small amount of water, with a small amount of food, and she is going to be alone with her baby. And she's asking Sayyidina Ibrahim, her husband, who was leaving. He just left them with that little food and little water, and he's leaving. She said, are you leaving us? To whom are you leaving us? She is asking him three times, one time, the second and the third time. And then she said, Allahu amaraka bihada. Is it Allah? Is it a divine order? B because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't, you know, for, for using our criteria, using our standards, I won't leave my wife in the middle of the desert and my little baby. I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. But Ibrahim alayhi salam, and that takes us to the second point. His way was clear, and even though it might entail some higher level of sacrifice and submission, he would do it and he would take it. He would submit to Allah because it's clear to him. Our submission as Muslims, my dearest brothers and sisters, is not blind. It's actually, it's meaningful, it's based on enlightenment. It's based on our faith in Allah being the Lord, the Creator, the God, the right boss, if I may say, the right leader, the right one to follow and to worship. Even though He might ask us sometimes what may not make sense for some of us, He is testing us. مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ What do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do? Allah is saying, what would Allah do by punishing you if you are grateful and you show Allah faith? Allah Azza will test my faith and your faith. Allah tested the faith of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the iman of Hajar alayhi salam, the iman of Ismail alayhi salam, and because it was so clear to them, Hajar would submit. Hajar would say, if Allah is the one who orders you to leave us here, لن يضيعنا. He would not leave us alone. I submit to him. It's clear to me. If it's a divine order, I take it. And yes, Allah will not waste them. Allah will not cause them to go deviant, to go in loss. No, it's the other way around. Everybody would follow on the footsteps of Hajar. Everybody throughout the history to come, the, the, the future to come, everybody would come to the same place and mimic the same movements of Hajar alayhi salam and it's not about running between two mountains it's not about the mountains at all it's not a, it's not even about the place these are all symbolic it's about the action it's about the role model of Hajar alayhi salam the clarity of her vision and insight and the submission 
And the sacrifice of this beautiful believing woman, our mother, the mother of one of the, the greatest mothers and leaders of the believers at all times, for all the time to come. It's, it's all about the clarity of the vision and inside of Ismail alayhi salam, even though he might be asked to sacrifice his own blood, his own self. His father literally asked him, Inni ara fil manami anni adbahuk. O my son, I see in my vision, I see in a dream that I'm slaughtering you. Not any kind of, of killing or it's slaughtering you. And his father himself, he's seeing it in a vision, in a dream that he is doing it himself. What will be your reaction if if you I'm I'm I might be a believer, you might be a strong believer, right? But how far are we willing to sacrifice? Right? We live in a time and age right now, my dearest brothers and sisters, when if it doesn't make sense to me, I'm not going to follow it. We see arrogance. We see arrogance coming from within us, not submitting to Allah. And that arrogance misleads us, misleads the fitrah of the human beings. And we see it all around. We see the, human, the humanity is going into really slippery slope following this idea or this thought or this indecency and we know what's going on and we're just trying to protect our iman and our faith we are not alone we have ibrahim alayhi salam we look up to ibrahim alayhi salam back in his time where everybody is worshiping the stone but he's so clear for him my lord is allah and he announced it in them he announced it and he announced it to his own children that it would remain until the end of the time the true da'wah, the true call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why those who are in Mecca, may Allah accept from them, are going to respond to his call. The call to go and the call to follow Allah azza wa jalla alone and submit yourself to Allah azza wa jalla. Ismail alayhi salam did the same thing, right? It was so clear to him that if it is from Allah, <clears throat> I will take it, I will submit myself. It looks, everything looks bad. Everything looks maybe unacceptable. I don't know. But in reality, we do not know, my brothers and sisters. I do not know what's good for me. I, I, I am supposed to do my best to think, to make ijtihad, to do my best. But do I really know what is best for me? Do you really know? Do you think you know what is best for you? I think we need to rethink it because many times our own choices we suffer because of. We suffer because of our very own choices sometimes, actually many times. And what we think is bad many times turns to be the best for us. Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. This is one of the lessons. This is one of the lessons that people, pilgrims, and Muslims go to Hajj to learn. Submit to Allah. Submit to Allah. Why, why am I here? Why am I coming all the way to this valley of Muzdalifah to just lay on the ground? I remember a few years ago, I was, you know, thousands, millions upon millions of people are rushing to the same valley. And I was just down the hell. And the, the, the mountain or one hell was almost falling on us. Why are we coming here? What am I doing here? Is it, what is the significance? You know, if I use my, my mind, it might not make a lot of sense. But it does make all the sense. Because it is the order and the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We submit, we train ourselves to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if we do it the way He wants it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make everything else in our life aligned the right way because no other leader other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no other God should anybody take otherwise subhanallah we will suffer in our life if we 
fo even follow our own thoughts all the time. This is the brain and the mind, the, the, the intellectual power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is so unique. No other religion besides Islam has ever honored the aql of the human being and the fitrah of the human being and the deen and the body of the human being than Islam does subhanallah. It's not that we ignore our minds. No, it's, we, it's that we, we utilize them the right way. We make sure that we use this sophisticated tool that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the right way. Otherwise, look at how many people they use or abuse their powers and their intellect to invent things to destroy humanity, how to destroy more things, bombard more people, how to, with a, a click of, of, a, of a device from far away that I can blow up an entire city or town and we know what we can do. We know what we are already doing to our humanity nowadays, to our earth nowadays, to our own selves nowadays because of the substance that we do, because of the ideas and thoughts that we develop and we allow to get into our life. Hajj comes to reset all of that. To restart the whole system. You know what? You're no more than an abd. You're no more than a servant of God. We are pushed to our limits in Hajj. Everybody who goes to Hajj, you know that very well. You will be put, it's meant, you will be pushed to your limit so as to be tested. Whether you will be patient, whether you will be willing to take those few days for the sake of Allah, just as we are being pushed in a different way to our limits during the month of Ramadan. It's all to be purified. It's all to be, to be born again, reborn, re-delivered, purer and cleaner. And this is something everybody who goes to Hajj feels it. We know, we go to Arafah, we cry in Arafah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His above the skies in a way that fits His Majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala is proud of the those who are coming to him shu'than ghubran dahin those who are coming with, with uncombed hair dusty all over uncovered with anything in the sun coming in millions leaving everything behind having no intention and having no goal but the pleasure of Allah and gaining the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a procession of faith in in full submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need the full and pure and clear clarity, the clarity of the vision like Ibrahim alayhi salam. We need to, you know, we, we live our lives one day, we adopt this, we abandon this, we are bored of this, we change our thoughts, we change our mind. Part of that is normal. However, we need to have a clean and clear standard for our life. We need to have furqan. We need to have that way and that base basically of being able to know right from wrong which way to go that is something we learn when we reconnect with Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam and Hajar alayhi salam we learn from them as we not only study there it's not a story that we read it's not something that we just tell our uh, uh, kids about it's not it's not social it's not something that is social it is more of actions that is being repeated that is being um, re-implanted in our life and and cultivated in our life year after year may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us follow in the footsteps of Ibrahim alayhi salam may Allah give us all the clarity of, of vision and insight in front of us so as to see the way and may Allah make us fully submit to his will and accept whatever that, that he decrees and decides for us. Ameen. Uh, we are going to go into a short break and we will be back after that. See you shortly inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome back my dear viewers to Hajj Day Today. 
And uh, on this segment, we uh, have with us Sheikh Ibrahim Zidan from Mecca. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from him. We are very blessed to have Sheikh Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh Ibrahim. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, very delighted to see your face and to see the haram and to uh, be connected with somebody who is making hajj, MashaAllah. May Allah accept from you. Sheikh Ibrahim, you are in Mecca, the, the holy city of Mecca, in the holiest of days, the most sacred days, the days of hajj. Tomorrow, inshallah, is a big day, the beginning of the days of Hajj al Tarwiyah, followed by the day of Arafah, followed by the day of Al Nahr, and then the days of Mina. If you could take us with you to this journey, uh, just elaborating a little bit on what's going to take place from tomorrow and onwards, inshallah. <laughs> Wallahi subhanAllah, this came perfectly after Salat al-Isha. Salat al-Isha, actually, the Imam recited the first verses of Surah al-Hajj. And subhanAllah, how this Surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the title of it is al-Hajj. There is no other pillar of Islam that is a Surah. It's called by a pillar of Salah or Zakah, except Hajj. And the beginning of the verses talks about the Day of Judgment. And for mankind to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because indeed the the, the earthquake of the hour is a terrible thing. And how is that related to the journey of Hajj is closely related. And this is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in Surah Al-Hajj, it starts the first verses, it talks about the hereafter, at the end of the Surah, the same thing. And then when it comes to the journey, without taking too much of, uh, of the viewer's time, it's such a beautiful journey that even though it's an obligation once in lifetime, but it's meant to be a life changing for the rest of the life of those who make Hajj, even if they do it once in their lifetime. Tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, is the 8th of the Hijjah, and so this is the day of the Tarwiyah, where it's sunnah recommended for people to be in Mina. The Prophet والسلام, prayed Dhuhr and Asr and Naghr and Isha, and then the following day, which is the day of Arafah, he also prayed it in Mina, prayed Fajr there, and he stayed there and made victory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala till after sunrise and then he went to uh, Arafah and the Hajj Arafah as we all know this is the main thing of the Hajj. So Sheikh Ibrahim, uh, sorry to interrupt but for the sake of those who might not got the chance in the past to do Umrah or Hajj, you are in Mecca right now and you're talking about the Hujjaj, the pilgrims tomorrow moving to Mina. How far is Mina and what is the atmosphere there and what do they do when they move from Mecca to Mina tomorrow, um, the 8th of the Hajj inshallah? Uh, actually, Mina is attached to Mecca. So if a person is in Mecca, he would see Mina as if it's just another district of Mecca. So right attached to uh, Mecca. So it takes maybe 10 minutes from the Haram all the way to Mina. But because of course the, the number of people, which is a beautiful thing, the more we see, mashallah, the, the millions of those who are present and making Hajj, it takes a while for them to go from the Haram or from Mecca to Mina and because of the transportations and things like this. So it takes them a few hours till they get there. And until they uh, reach their destinations, each people in their in their tent and things like this. And some people, they go directly to Arafah because of how much or how many people there are. Uh, but this is the when it comes to, to Mina, which is, again, uh, very close. And this is part of Mecca, basically, literally, if you can say that. And then, but, but staying in Mina, and it's better to stay in Mina tomorrow than to stay in Mecca, if people have the ability to do so, because this is part of the Nusuk, part of the rituals of Hajj. And the Prophet he shortened the salah there without combining it, which shows that shortening the salah is not because people are traveling. This is part of the hajj. That means even people, those who are from Mecca, they also shorten the salah. So, Sheikh Na, and the this night, is, which is the day after is, tomorrow. Uh, before we move to the day of Arafat, this I look at it, I'm not sure you might uh, agree with me or not, that this is the beginning of the downsizing or um, leaving behind if you are in a hotel if you are in a building you are moving down in dunya dunya wise you are going to a tent from beginning from tomorrow it's going to be almost leaving a lot of the dunya behind you um, living the next couple of days or few days in tents right just put us in the experience Allah, 
and uh, what you what you mentioned is really what people sometimes they get distracted of physically what they need to do in Hajj and they overlook the secrets or the wisdom behind moving from one place to the other and carrying with them in their hearts these meanings. So as you mentioned, people go tomorrow to Mina and they stay in a tent, a temporary thing. This entire life is just something that is temporary, but then they still leave it and they leave it behind and they go to Arafah. And they spend the day in Arafah and in dua and dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is where the shaitan is never seen more humiliated than he is in the day of Arafah because of the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards those who are present and to the entire Muslims ummah, inshallah ta'ala, by also they would share with the Hajjaj by fasting the people in Hajj, they don't fast. And then after that, they leave Arafah, they go to Muzdalifah. And it's amazing that they don't pray Maghrib and Isha in Arafah when but the sun Sheikh sets. Ibrahim, again, sorry to interrupt, but Allah you cannot you cannot just pass by the day of Arafah that fast. Day of Arafah is the you know we you know the big fight between the scholars whether it's the day of Arafah or the day of Al Nahr, which one is the best ever? Day of Arafah is Yawmul Hajj. This is Al Hajj, Al Hajj Arafah. We need to touch on the spiritualities of that day. What happens to people? What is going on? What, what are the actions and what are the spirituality of the pilgrims on Arafat? As you mentioned, subhanAllah, the, the hadith of the Prophet Al-Hajj Arafat. That means Hajj is Arafat. And the hadith that are mentioned in the day about the day of Arafat, the forgiveness of the sins and the acceptance of the dua, the best dua is the dua of Arafat. And the Prophet والسلام, and he said the best thing that I and the Prophets before me said on the day of Arafah is La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah la mulk la alhamdulillah wa kulli shayin qadir. And by the way, there's an authentic hadith in Bukhari and Muslim where the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they would mix in the day of Arafah between the talbiyah and the takbir. So some would make uh, talbiyah, some would make takbir. And this is a day where the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is very apparent and it's very clear in the hearts of the people. And this is how the dua is even accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When there's no associating partners with Allah, this is something that the entire world really need to, to see this, this beauty of the day of Arafah and the day of Hajj, where people, they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely for the sake of Allah. Turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with dua, the tears are shed, the sins are forgiven, the shaitan is never seen more humiliated than he is seen in the day of Arafah. So uh, words cannot explain it. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept everyone and everyone's uh, actions in the day of Arafah. Uh, if you can talk to us a little bit, Sheikh Ibrahim, uh, if you have time about the time between Asr and Maghrib on the day of Arafah and, and what's going on. You, you look left and right, people crying, people are just in, in full... Uh, humiliation, humbling themselves for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is a special thing you smell in the air that's so different in, the, in that specific time, that last hour before the end of the day of Arafah and maybe more so because the day of Arafah this year, mashallah, you're very um, blessed, it's going to be Friday. Talk to us a little bit about the emotions of the pilgrims, especially on the last couple of hours um, uh, of the day of Arafah, please. Actually, this is uh, words that cannot explain it, really. And as you mentioned, uh, it's something that if a person was is not an Arafah, he would not be able to explain how people that you have. Everybody is an Arafah. And everybody, especially before Maghrib, after Asr, everybody is busy making dua. And you would see and hear people overwhelmed with their tears, with their needs to their Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, 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 the feel that everybody is in need of the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for themselves and for their loved ones. It's, there's no matching to this scene whatsoever in the entire life that a Muslim would see that many people and everybody have the same concern, everybody turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this concern and this devotion. It's, a, it's an amazing one, subhanAllah. And this is how the beauty of the deen is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, you know, he brings his slaves to such places to have the mercy upon them and to forgive them and to extract from them this uh, khushu and this humbleness, and this devotion and sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Last question, Shaykh Khan al-Habib, our beloved Shaykh. Uh, we're jealous. Everybody who is not there looks at you. In Ghibta, inshallah, we are happy for everybody who is there. But you, you're talking, you're, you're taking us to the, to the sky right now, mashallah. Is that only for you 
or do we, those who are left behind, those who could not make it this year, uh, do we have any share on the day of Arafah? Allah barik fi, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from everyone. And what really matters is the acceptance. How many, it's easy sometimes to go for hajj, but the acceptance is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us. What you mentioned is uh, acceptance and the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not limited to, to those who are only in hajj. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have made it obligatory upon the ummah every year. And this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't make. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, well, sadat, man, you won't be able to do it. That's why there are certain actions to be done. And the entire ummah would share in the same reward that those you can consider them delegates of the ummah to be in this uh, pure place in Mecca and Arafah and Stalika and so on. And that is by really as mentioned in the first ayah of Surah Al Hajj. Ya Nasu Taqwa Inna Zalzalat Al Saad Shayun Ma'adib. To fear Allah, to be dutiful to Allah. And there are specific actions, of course, with this. To remember the year after, of course, to fast the day of Arafah for those who are able to do so expiates the sin of a previous year and the present year. As the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, uh, if people, if a person stays in the masjid and prays Salat al-Fajr and sit and he makes dhikr to sunrise, this is the reward of, and then prays to rakah, the reward of it is hajj and umrah complete, complete. If a person goes to the masjid to learn or to teach matters of deen, uh, as if he made hajj as one of the if authentic I, hadith of the Prophet If I may Ali pick it up there, Sheikh Ibrahim, time is pressing and uh, just you being in uh, al-masjid al-haram, and doing Hajj and those who are uh, maybe watching us right now and, and, and happen to be there, please do not forget your Muslim brothers and sisters everywhere in the world, those who might be suffering, those who might be in need, those who are yearning with their heart to go there, please don't forget to make dua for all of us, inshallah. May Allah accept from you. We will, inshallah, try to get you again, Sheikh Ibrahim. Uh, and, uh, one, one thing, if you don't mind me, Sheikh Ham. Sure, go ahead, One please. thing very quick. As you said, the dua, Wallahi, this ummah, this ummah is blessed. This ummah is blessed. This ummah is not weak. This ummah is blessed by the fact that they can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you always benefiting. Thank everyone. you for your time. May Allah accept from you. Keep us in your dua, Shaykh Ibrahim. Every pilgrim right there, keep the whole ummah in your dua. And yes, mashallah, the ummah is strong. Wallahi, I see this. I see the strength of the ummah when I go to Hajj. Not only me. Look at Malcolm X, Al Hajj. Malik Shabbat, subhanAllah. Look at the, the, the life transforming um, uh, experience. Then you go to Hajj. I remember I am kind of used to be athletic, right? And I go between Safa and Marwa. It, it, it's, it's exhausting, right? Physically exhausting. Tawaf, followed by Safa and Marwa coming all the way from America, in my case, traveling for a day or two. And for many people coming from Australia and from far away Asia whatever it happens and then you go tawaf seven times this seven times sometimes you just I, I, I remember one time I, I took a I took a break I'm just sitting down to catch my breath or something and I see this Hajj this uh, Hajj or, or, or Muslim brother from it looks like Asian and very old very weak and he is mashallah jogging and running between a Safa and Marwa and I look at myself, what's wrong with me? I'm sitting, I'm enjoying some of the air condition, I'm catching my... And the brother there is, is running and jogging. You, you see the strength of the ummah, the, the black next to the white, the males and the females, the wazir. The, I see a lot of celebrities in there. You will just get into some famous politician, or maybe a, a celebrity somehow. Everybody is there, no difference. We're all wearing the same. We're all coming for the very same purpose. We're all praying towards the same Qibla, praying Allah, the same Lord, doing the same rituals. Wallahi, there is nothing like this. I can, there's no words. I echo what Sheikh Ibrahim is saying. No words can describe this until and unless you go there. And those who were blessed enough to go make Hajj and Umrah know exactly what I'm talking about. You feel that what you left behind, you feel that what's going on in the news, you feel that the, the hal or the circumstances of the ummah out there is totally different than it is right here. Somebody is helping, somebody is carrying. This is carrying his mother, this is carrying his father. 
or a brother or somebody that you do not know do you need anything that I can help you with yes there is a reflection of some of the downsides we don't want to talk about this but some of it could be normal because of the gathering of millions in one place however we always look at the brighter side and we feel the strength of this ummah that is uh, happening right there and, and, and it's being achieved and we go back with beautiful memories beautiful not only ibadat insha'Allah being acceptance and for, um, forgiveness and rahmah from Allah but we actually go back with beautiful connections with beautiful believers from all over the world the, the person that you spend that night next to in Muzdalifa talking and chatting and making dua together and when it's time for salah you, you um, make salah you remind him or her of their medications you're sharing you're talking about dunya or about deen those memories and those friendships and those connections they are they last forever literally last forever because they are based on things beyond this world there's nothing else that can describe this or else why would somebody come from Canada or America or Egypt or Africa or Asia leaving the comfort of their home following on the footsteps of somebody who lived some 3000 plus years ago but he was the Imam of the believers Prophet Ibrahim السلام, following the monastic the rituals of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the greatest of all, the leader of all, the Imam of all, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As we go to Hajj, and may Allah give us the opportunity to go there, or at least go make Umrah soon, insha Allah. We remember the stories of those great giant people of faith, those greatest of all um, people. May Allah subhanahu wa taala accept from you those who are watching me from Mecca or Medina from those who are making Hajj, the pilgrims, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us and all of us, those who are not there, may Allah give us the opportunity to one day go and be with them, be with the Hujjaj, be with the pilgrims in Mecca and visit the uh, Masjid of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa and pray in there. Ameen, ameen, may Allah accept from us. I remind you, don't forget, day after tomorrow, Thursday is going to be Arafat. Go ahead and fast on that day. As Shaykh Ibrahim reminded us, the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, fasting of that day alone will expiate the sins, will wipe out the sins of two years, the previous and the next. I conclude with this ayah from the Quran and I leave you in the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after this. Allah Almighty says, وَإِذْ بَوَّأْنَا لِإِبْرَاهِيمَ مَكَانَ الْبَيْتِ أَلَّا تُشْرِكْ بِي شَيْئًا وَطَرِيْ